he hui a wai a tawhaka hui hui he tui, wai a tawhaka tui tui, tā te tangata he whakawhanaunga. Hui hui a mai e ngai wi haumi e, hui e tai ki e. This week on The Hui. We're in to Matoa Maui as the cyclone cleanup continues, but the devastation remains. It's about history, it's about memory, all gone, all gone. And specialist teams are helping to assess the damage to Taonga to Kuiho. I mean, carvings are quite resilient, they're quite robust. Um, it's really the tulisipi panels that are the concern. Plus, we see what the Maramataka Māori says about the future impacts on our environment. And we begin our first episode tonight with the very sad news just received of the passing of the world's first transgender MP, Georgina Baia. He uri no te atiawa, no ngati mutunga, no ngati rakawa, me ngati poro. Passing at the age of 65, elected to Parliament in the Wairarapa electorate in 1999 and then a list MP for Labour from 2005 through to 2007. Georgina, moi mai rā, i te moenga o te ariki. Huritu mai kia tātou kei te uturoa, te hewa Māori ora, welcome to our first episode of the Hui for 2023. Māori current affairs for all. Rural communities in Te Matua Māui were among those hardest hit by Cyclone Gabriel. Despite the devastation and immense loss, Fano and Waiohiki, a community north of Hastings, are pulling together to help each other through these uncertain times. E ki ana te kōrero he aroha whakatō, he aroha puta mai. Kei a John Boynton, tēnei pūrongo. In the face of the catastrophe and tragedy of Cyclone Gabriel. It's about history, it's about memory. All gone, all gone. Our whanau's lives have just been washed away. Māori communities in Te Matoa, Maui are showing the true meaning of manaakitanga. I've got yours now. Oh. Sorry about the miss. <laughs> we are here to serve our people and our whakapapa dictates that. When you hear the cry of your people, you respond, and that's what I've done. Two weeks on, the carnage from Cyclone Gabriel still lines the roads leading into Waiohiki. Never ever experienced something of this magnitude in Waiwiki. Tamati Keen's community lying in ruins. Certainly the last huge event like this to hit Napier was the 1936 earthquake. In the early hours of the morning, the Tūtaikuri River burst its banks, sending a torrent of water sweeping through the community here in Waiohiki and forcing residents to flee for their lives. Still fresh in Tamati's memory. By quarter to seven, seven o'clock, the water was over a two-metre retainer wall and was rushing through here like a river. Tamati and his wife Pauline were lucky. Their home had minor damage. But the same can't be said for the rest of the newly built Papakainga homes on Tahiri Lane. The good thing, we're still here. We're still here. For everybody, it's time for started healing, the next coping, and followed by that, rebuilding. The papakainga which Tamati runs was years in the making and cost millions to build. Their new homes now drowning in contaminated sludge. Anywhere between 18 months and two years to put it all back together again. Cost? Oh, much. Insurance? That's another level of uh, negotiations for all the families. The reality may not have sunk in just yet, so it's just standing united and staying together. Hone and Kylie's Fano homestead is red stickered and will be pulled down. Uh, these are the uncle's these kitties. Uncles. Yeah. yeah, so we salvaged them out of the shed today. Just as a young boy growing up here, um, and this is where my children come, and uh, so will their children. 
we will repair and we will rebuild and bring our whānau back together again. They're tired and their whānau are homeless, but they're not standing alone. We had a couple of shovels and it was just us three, my husband, my brother-in-law, myself, and within minutes, people congregated to come and help. What about the door without the missing shawl? The army of volunteers is being led by Kane Warren. It's been hard to explain with words when you're meeting whānau that uh, have lost everything. We've been able to appreciate what we have when you see the devastation of things lost for whānau here. So uh, it's a labour of love. Thanks for letting us on. No, thank you thank for helping. You. Rural Māori communities are amongst those hit hardest by Cyclone Gabriel. Bridges like this were wiped out by raging waters, debris and slash, cutting communities off. This place means everything to me. And I've been born and raised here, and so I've become the village. And so no matter where we travel to, you can always feel and hear your people. You guys are right up there. Pia Wilson's doing everything she can to ensure her community in Motheo isn't forgotten. I came in uh, with the pilot on the first day. That was heartbreaking. The whānau here were very lost. Because of the isolation and the cutoff of access to the roads, they felt that they had been forgotten about. Some canned food for them. Today, she's gathered with locals at their community control centre. Timi Karamarai. That you get our whānau to safety, yeah. that's our priority. We don't want to be recovering anybody. She's a reassuring voice. I feel that they still don't have a voice, and that's where I come in, to be that voice for the community here. We've got Kai here, and we'll set security checks up into the pa while you are gone as well. But yeah, definitely get our whānau to safety. All right, OK, love you. Down the road at Waipatsumarai and Hastings, it's all go at the Iwi's main emergency response centre. So it was the second day that we were stood up by civil defence to become a, an evacuation centre. And when it comes to, you know, an Iwi HQ and a disaster like this, what is an Iwi HQ all about? I think it's really evolved really organically. But what it looked like, like I think, is just natural monarchy of our people. Tane Tomoana is at the helm of this well-oiled machine. Fano just pull up here and um, we fill up their cars with kai. Um, we get trucks from other hapu coming over and we fill their trucks up with kai, water, goods, baby goods. Almost a million dollars of goods have been donated and there is a great need. How many whānau have you had through here every night? We originally had about 95 evacuees. Um, it's a whole hapu. Um, so it's all the whānau from Waiohiki. Oh, we've been looked oh, after like Ranatira here. Hedia Tumwana escaped from raging floodwaters in Waiohiki and has been overwhelmed by the Manakitanga at Waipatsumarai. Well, it's totally here. You know, Manakitanga, Arohanui, Whakapono, which are all Māori, and those are all our Māori concepts, eh? From social services to accommodation, this support for Fano is vital. Their resilience has just been absolutely mind-blowing, and to hear them laughing and to hear joy in their hearts after they've lost everything, um, it's just been such a privilege. Looking ahead, Pia Wilson says the community will need help to plan the rebuild. It's just getting um, access to the professionals, buildings and engineers to come and hui with the community here to give them that advice. Well, here, and Tamati Cairns believes support needs to be readily available. There are the government systems levels of support. Some of our people are whakamā to ask. So those systems ought to kick in to make things happen rather than um, come into the office and apply. Fano are facing an uncertain future, but it's one they're determined to tackle together. Our thoughts are out there with our whole community, especially those who have lost loved ones. Kia kaha. Look after one another, feel the pain, and don't forget to karakia. 
Our reporter John Boynton with that story. Now, if you want to donate to help those affected by Cyclone Gabriel, you can do so by looking at the links on our Facebook page. That's for Fano, Hapu, and Iwi and Marae. So again, on the Hui Facebook page. Coming up next, we're heading back to Tamatawa Maiwi, where specialist teams are helping to assess the damage to Taonga Tukuiho. Tarokawi Hone, Itatata Hui. E tū tonu ana tā tātou hui, hoki mai anō rā. The images have been tough to see. Wahi tapu across te matoa Maui submerged in sludge, drowned by the deluge caused by tropical cyclone Gabriel. Many Fano whose own homes could not be saved then had to come to terms with their farenui and urupa damaged beyond repair from the ferocious storm. Reporter Ruani Pereira visited some of the worst affected areas to see what Taonga can be salvaged, what can be restored, and what will need to be rebuilt. Tangoio Marae in Esk Valley, north of Napier, was built on housing raffles and other fundraisers. It's the beating heart of this hapu. But since February 14, has been on life support. Brothers Joe and Bevan Taylor know every inch of their meeting house. This is our town hall, OK? This is our library. This is everything. This is our hospital. This is all of that. They helped build it in the late 80s and worked on its carvings. Friday just broke our hearts. So I was so emotional. I was crying inside. Yeah, I was crying inside. And people had to come and ask me, I was just crying. Gabrielle's fury has all but demolished their farekai, and this was the state of their farenui after the Category 3 cyclone. More than a week after the floods, Fano have gathered to pay their respects, organising this whakamoimiti to give thanks to this special place. <laughs> Ao kia mo, kia uru, kia kia kōpē, 
Despite the constant rain and treacherous mud-soaked silt, Fano flocked to Tangoyo. Also there, a team from Heritage New Zealand and Te Papa. Uh, he awhuna, he atawhai, tō tātou mahi i ngā iwi kei a rātou ngā whakautu katoa. Uh, I a rātou pātai, nō reira ko tō mātou mahi, he, he tau toko e awhuna i a rātou. Um, te anga whakamua, i ngā marama, i ngā tau kei te heke mai. He hua rahi i whānui kei mui i a rātou. Nō reira tō mātou mahi, he awhuna, he tau toko i a rātou. For the past 30 years, Dean Whiting has been working with marae around the country for the conservation of Taonga. But the mammoth task ahead is a first for him. Have you ever witnessed anything like this before? No, no, this is a tremendously sad day for the people here. You can see it in everyone, eh, the sadness of the situation. And the devastation is more than you can fathom through television and all the other kinds of media. So that's the thing that impacts really on you coming here. Um, and I think you can just see that it's going to take some time to get back, people to get back on their feet. Fano, whose own homes have been affected, have worked long hours to lessen the impact of the large quantities of silt. Many more Fano couldn't be here. With a state of emergency in force, many, like Tali Hinton, stayed away. Even though she now lives in Wellington, Tangoyo will always be home. I regret not going home. I understand health and safety, but I, I wish we had gone home. Tali is comforted with the special childhood memories she spent there. It was also where she received her moko kowai last year. It's a beautiful whare, and it still is a beautiful whare, regardless of what's happened. Dean and his team are almost finished surveying the damage done to the precious carvings and tukutuku panels that many here helped to make. Actually, the taonga is in good shape and beautifully sheltered by the whare that's around it. So that's the amazing thing, is this building actually protected them. He's praised the enormous effort Fano have made during what's been a traumatic time for them. You know, they've got the main silk material off and cleaned it, and they're starting to dry out. So they're in good shape. You know, that was the really surprising thing, I think. I mean, carvings are quite resilient, they're quite robust. Um, it's really the tulisipi panels um, that are the concern. And their, their mahi right now is getting more of the mud out. And then it'll be the next phase when they go to dismantle. 45 minutes south of Tangoyo, in the middle of Hawke's Bay's wine country, Omahu. Known to locals as the Promised Lands, this community was almost washed away when the Naruroro River broke its banks three weeks ago. So when we come through this way, over the bridge, coming home and then seeing our Urupa here, it was this just the most heartbreaking thing you can imagine. While Omahu Marae wasn't badly affected, their Urupa was directly in the cyclone's destructive path. It's hard to even comprehend the force of nature. Take this rock, stone, concrete wall that's been completely brought down gravestones unearthed, exposing human remains, koiwi and bones. Fano now left with the task of retrieving those and seeking advice as to what happens to them next. Let's not rush into reinterment just yet, because yeah. what you don't want to do is have to do it two or three times because you've found more. So it's, that's a re it's a difficult one for you. Yeah. It's a difficult one for Fano. Heritage New Zealand and Te Papa are working closely with this community and want iwi and hapu to take the lead in the restoration of Taonga. Yeah, but underneath there's a lot of um, silt that we're going to have to get out, but you guys can have a, have a, have an assess and have a look at that. We're very thankful uh, to be able to have the expert advice because this is quite a unique situation. Um, never would I have thought that the water uh, from the river would be able to dig up holes that six feet deep. Um, so, yeah, uh, quite a shock. 
the koiwi which have been collected, we're keeping them here in the whare karakia, and then we'll look to reinterring them uh, once the recovery efforts a little bit more along the way. Back in Esk Valley, coming to terms with the true extent of the damage is only the beginning of this massive exercise. In coming weeks, the carvings and panels will be taken down and safely stored. Our engineers, when we clear the carvings and slides, they're going to have a good look to see if there's any structural damage. If there's structural damage, then this party will come down. It's an emotional time for us, but we got to get on with it. Yeah, we just got to lift our chin up and move forward. I might be around by then, but I find I know what to do. None of us would have wanted this to happen, but if it needs to happen, as long as our taonga are removed safely, if they decide that's the best decision, then cater by. Is this the first of many visits that you'll make here? First of many. This is the start of a journey. I think this will be a chapter in their story. Māori communities have this resilience that's quite extraordinary because collectively there's that whakapapa that binds, there's the cultural sinews that bind the people together. So that there's always that collective memory. And so what will be important is thinking about ways to mark this period, but in a way that's built on going forward. This catastrophe has enabled us to reignite that manakitanga, reignite that aroha, and of course to share that with our wider community and to build up our communities once more. Rani Pereira with that story there. Hey, Topuki Itatato Hui Engaiwi. We are joined live in studio by Tohunga Tayao, Tohunga Maramataka, Rediata, Makia. E fito fito tonuana, Teahi, o te kordero, a te hui.
Ko te waka puta ngā tuatahi tēne o te hui i tēne i tau, nō reira hui hui a mai i te tini e te mano. Welcome back. Recent weather events have raised questions of our ability to predict extreme conditions and seek a greater understanding of our natural world. Rerata Mākiha is a maramataka expert in Ngātaka o te marama and holder of ancestral knowledge who says that the maramataka is key to reading environmental cues. He uri no ngā puhi me te rarawa me tahi o tu iwi. Matua Rerata Mākiha joins me now. E te matua te nā koe. Te nā koe. Te nā koe. Whai wahi mai koe kia mātou. We've seen in the coverage of the hui today that the country has gone through some very traumatic weather conditions and climactic events. Were there signs that you saw before these events that potentially indicated that some devastating weather conditions were on their way? Mm. Uh, the uh, there are some indicators on the 2nd of December uh, at uh, about half past five in the morning uh, that there was going to be uh, some event that's going to be, well, we didn't know that it was going to be that catastrophic. But when the kawa tree normally flowers to the east and the north, and it'll follow the same old uh, summer patterns. But this year, uh, it flowered west and south. And so to get some understanding of what that actually means, we go back to Kōrero Tukuiho from the Whare Wānanga. Hei roto e rā kōrero, ka mea mai whakarongo whakarongo ki te uru, ko te whati tiri tu hea iho o nāra ki te uira. And so that means just catastrophic storm conditions. When is that likely to happen? Well, we always follow the, the that's when we go back to the Maramataka, and um, uh, it indicated that it was going to be on those tamate days in uh, in January. So uh, the final back home, and, and quite interestingly, a lot of our young people who are starting to learn uh, about the Maramataka uh, did some really interesting preparations. You know, like in their travels, they swapped their little car for a truck with a snorkel and a winch. <laughs> this is before the event. Uh, the only thing that those tuhu can't predict is how catastrophic mm. the event is going to be. It just says to prepare and get ready because they're going to come on those tamate days. I recall when we were at Waitangi together this year and you said to me, look at those karuhiruhi, the pied shags I think they are. Look at the karuhiruhi. And we looked at them and they were pointing west. And you said to me, have a look at those. And then you went back to the Manamataka again and looked at Tabatea Tangaroa days to see when it might come again. And of course, that cyclone happened on those days. How are you able to teach those things to people so that we can help predict these events in the future? Yeah, it's, it's a, a lifetime of just living uh, living with it. And and because a lot of our kōrero tukuihu have been, have been lost, or while the interpretations are, are quite difficult, uh, that uh, sometimes we guess <laughs> that this is going to happen and then when it happens they think, well, you're a genius. Mm. Uh, but there are certain uh, tohu and those uh, karuhiruhi are certainly a, a, a kai tohu, that what's going to come and what's going to happen. The only thing that is we can't predict the exact dates, but we go back to the maramataka and the most unpredictable days are those tomate days in the maramataka. So mm. um, this year we were right and next year we hopefully we'll be right again if these conditions persist. How then can that help inform the way that we rebuild communities? Where to build houses, if indeed we can build houses in certain places, in certain locations, again, after what we have seen? Can there be some, hint, some help, some, hint, some hints there that help us in rebuild? Well, if we look back at what our tūpuna used to do, that they were all temporary shelters, so they kept moving them around, so they weren't permanent. Uh, a lot of those uh, homes were permanent, but a lot of them were moved up to the hills and uh, uh, some of the marae were shifted from the original spot and they were moved up to higher ground as well. Uh, so our, our, our people know about those, uh, uh, about those events and preparing for them. So how accepting then are councils, government departments, to this kind of expertise? To be fair that you have been talking about for a long time and have held for a long time, how accepting are they of your expertise in these matters? I, th I think they're still experimenting with them, uh, thinking about it, and, and 
for me, I don't think it's for the it's a job for the councils and for government, but I think it's for us to teach our mokopuna how and, and our final how to read those events uh, by following ngā kaupeka o te tau and then the revolving cycles that uh, apply under with the maramataka. Just one last question. Uh, referring to Matauranga Māori in Kōrero Tukuiho, it's been called, I think, pernicious nonsense by some, that it shouldn't be included in teaching of science. What's your response to that? Yeah, I'm glad that it's not, uh, because science is... Uh, the interesting thing about science is you can determine the outcome and then get science to prove you are right. You can't do that in the, in the maramataka. The maramataka talks about how things... We look at how things are connected. So nga tohu o te rangi, tohu o te whenue, tohu o te mōna. When they are in alignment, you can predict these events. But science it, can't do that, that. Isn't that science? I don't know what science is. Tēnā koe. E te matua tēnā koe i whai wahi mai koe i kia mātou ngā mihi nui ki a koe. That was, of course, matua te reata mā ki a. E tiwi hei te rā wiki. Coming up next week on The Hui, we meet the auntie who knows heaps. OK, so you've got number one warrior's stalker freak here. Not in a creepy way. Hi. <laughs> I'm coming to interview. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Ange. Nice to meet you. Oh, you too. You too. We make a dream come true for social media fan favourite, Auntie Knows Heaps. I already had him as my profile for the That is us for our first ep for 2023. Now, don't forget to check out our Facebook page for links to donate to those affected by Cyclone Gabrielle and needing help. And you'll find links to our stories on our Facebook and Twitter accounts or at newshub.co.nz. Until next